Most people who want to lose weight will jump straight into a diet. But as a dietitian who has helped hundreds of people successfully lose weight, I know that that is not always the best approach. In fact, there are five things that I do with my clients before we even start into a dieting phase. And to help you, I'm gonna share those with you today. Now I wanna start off by showing you the Nike swoosh effect of weight loss. Essentially, just like the Nike tick goes down initially, you lose weight short term. However, it's often followed by some weight regain back to your original weight. And then a couple of months later, your weight is higher than where you started off in the first place. And to avoid this, we really need to make sure that we're starting off a diet on the right foot. And that's where I come in today. If you're new here, I'm Maria and I'm a registered dietitian. Welcome to the channel. Now let's get into the video. Have you ever opened up a packet of biscuits or a packet of crisps and told yourself that you were only gonna have one or two, but then you find that once you start eating them, you're not able to stop? Or have you ever gone on a diet, been successful for a few days, only to find yourself having a big binge at the weekend and going completely off track? Well, my first point is that you should not be trying to lose weight unless you have a healthy relationship with food first. And I absolutely cannot stress this enough because if you have an unhealthy relationship with food, if you binge eat, if you have rules or obsessions around food, going on a diet will in fact probably result in you putting on weight and making some of these behaviors worse. When I myself was in college, I definitely didn't have the best relationship with food. And it was only when I managed to fix this, I became a dietitian and I learned how food and psychology work, was I ever able to successfully change my body composition. So the first thing that I would always look at when I have a client who wants to lose weight is how is their relationship with food? Because disordered or binge eating is much more common than we realize. And it's very hard to lose weight if you struggle with this. So if you are somebody who is always cycling on and off diets, you tend to lose control around food. Maybe you eat a lot more than you'd originally planned to. You eat in secret, you eat late at night or any of these things. I wouldn't say that you have a healthy relationship with food right now. And I would recommend pausing the weight loss goals and going back to basics. You may need the help of a dietitian with us because we can help you understand how your thoughts and your behaviors around your food and your eating habits are all linked. If it's helpful, I can do a whole series on emotional eating. Let me know in the comments below if this would be useful. But you need to try to improve your relationship with food first because I promise you, no matter how much magic I teach you on this channel, if you don't have a healthy relationship with food first, you will never be able to lose weight and successfully keep it off. And please understand that developing a healthy relationship with food isn't a quick fix either. It can take six to 12 months or even longer. And often in consultation with somebody like a dietitian or a local psychologist to help you work through some of these reasons that you lose control around food or you don't feel like you can stop once you start eating. Now I'm gonna pause here and ask that if you're enjoying the video so far, I would really appreciate it if you hit the red subscribe button below. It really helps support my channel. And if you're looking for healthy, high protein recipe ideas, I'd recommend following me over on Instagram. Now, successful dieting is all about psychology just as much as it is about food. And we've all heard about setting smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, blah, blah, blah. But I'm gonna let you in on a little secret here. I absolutely hate smart goals. If there has ever been a more overused generic framework for setting goals, it is this one. But setting goals is very important. Looking at mindset, looking at habits, and looking at routines. And this is a huge part of the prep work that I do with my clients. So I like to start with setting North Star goals. And believe it or not, although everyone says that our goals should be specific, North Star goals are not. And I like this because it allows us to develop a more flexible mindset when it comes to goal setting. And I like to remind my clients that flexible things can bend. They're resilient. Whilst rigid things snap and break. And a lot of the time when I ask a client at the start of a session, why do you want to see me? Why do you want to lose weight? It often isn't super specific. It's that I want to be healthier. I want to improve my quality of life. It's more tied to a value than a specific goal. So your North Star goal is your why. It's not a goal that once you reach, you tick off and that's it done. It's something you want to maintain. It's a life you want to live. So I will dive deep with my clients into why they want to become healthier. And we will list out all of the benefits that will come from them making these lifestyle changes if they follow through. This might be more confidence in yourself. Maybe you want to start dating again. It might be more energy so you can play with your kids. It might be to help improve your mental health or to avoid disease. But there can be a multitude of reasons and benefits to changing your lifestyle. Now, as grim as it may seem, I also get my clients to list out what will happen if they don't make any changes to their diet. And this could be things like not being around for your kid's wedding, not feeling confident to go on holidays with your friends, not being able to enjoy some of life's experiences. It could be getting sick and ending up in hospital. It could be being a bad example for your children. And so this North Star goal is the top of the pyramid. And after this, we can then move on to 
setting some more small specific goals to help us get to the top. But these always tie back to that main North Star goal. And I tell my clients to think of these micro goals as a staircase to the top. And why I like this is if you don't manage to succeed with one of these smaller goals, it's not the end of the world and it happens. So let's say, for example, you want to start running. I've had people say that they are going to start running and then a few weeks down the line, they realize that they absolutely hate running or they've injured an ankle. So instead of just completely giving up on this North Star goal, they say, okay, well, that staircase was not going in the right direction for me. Now think about it. If you were walking up a staircase and halfway up, you realized, okay, well, this is not going to the right hotel or the right apartment or to where I need to go. You would not keep trying to go all the way to the top only to realize you're in the wrong place, having to turn around and go all the way back down to the bottom. No, you stop and you refocus. You sidestep, you get on a different staircase and you try again. So maybe you realized running wasn't for you. So, okay, we park this and we try something else. Maybe you try Pilates, maybe you try walking with a friend. So setting smaller goals and regularly reflecting on them is key. And the reality is that weight loss is never a straight line to the top. There will always be things that work and things that don't, but you should be stopping and reflecting. Again, something I always say is that it's like running a marathon and not a sprint. And sometimes with weight loss, you also need to pause, stay on that same level of the staircase, and take a breath. It doesn't have to be go, go, go all the time. Now, James Clear famously said, you do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your system. And this is where we move on to making habits. And this is the key or the secret that anyone who succeeds at losing weight has in common. And this is a very in-depth process that I can break down more in future videos if people are interested. But it's not just building new habits, it's breaking old ones too. Now, have you ever heard the term success leaves clues? Well, it does. So another big part of the assessment process will be looking at a client's dieting history. Have they dieted before? How much weight did they lose? Did they regain the weight? What did they manage to stick to? And what was just absolutely impossible for them? And most of the time, people will tell me that they have successfully lost weight before. Usually the first time anybody goes on a diet, Losing weight can, in fact, be quite easy. I call this the honeymoon diet. It's a time that you look back on. You were young, you made a few changes, and the weight just came off. Now, maybe it slowly came back on over the years, but every next attempt at dieting, it just seemed to get harder and harder to lose weight. And this is for a multitude of reasons, one of them being metabolic adaptation. So you have not permanently damaged your metabolism or entered into some kind of a starvation mode, but your body maybe has been put out of whack from all of the times you attempted to starve it. Now the human metabolism is very adaptable and it can usually bounce back after a few days. But if you have been chronically dieting for a long time, you may have negatively altered your body composition. There could also be hormonal factors that we need to consider. So we may need to do a little bit of nurturing at this stage, but it's really important for me as a dietitian to really understand your dieting history. We can pull on the things that have worked and learn from the things that didn't. I have some clients that find a low carb diet can be helpful and others who simply could not live like that. And that's okay because it is not a one size fits all solution. Now, another phrase that gets thrown around a lot is that what gets measured gets managed. And I do quite like this. But contrary to what you might think, I'm not going to be getting you to strip down to your underwear and stand up on a weighing scale to measure your progress every time that you come to see me. What I like to do is take quite a few baseline measurements that we can then use to monitor your progress over time. But note that I said quite a few because one measurement alone will only tell us so much. So checking your weight may be one of them, but for some people, the weighing scales can be quite triggering. For other people, they love it. They find it helps hold them really accountable. Now our weight can be impacted by many things. So daily weights don't really give a clear picture, but looking at weight changes every two weeks or month on month can be useful for some. If possible, I will also take a waist circumference measurement or use other tools to look at how much fat mass you have versus how much muscle mass you have and look at where you are carrying that extra weight. I also like to get blood tests done if we can prior to making any big changes. That way we can see if there has been any big changes in your cholesterol, for example, or other markers of health. I will also often ask somebody to place themselves on a scale of one to 10 for many different factors. For example, energy levels, mood, and we can track to see how this changes over time. Because what I wanna try and teach you and what I want you to learn is the connection between your eating patterns and how you're feeling day to day and how it impacts you mentally, not only just physically. Now I do a lot of hand-holding at the start and I help my clients with grocery lists and meal plans. And I have a free recipe ebook linked below if you think this would be useful for you. But if you are working with me and you are serious about making a long-term lifestyle change, there is quite a few things that you are going to have to start doing. 
And some of that involves getting in the kitchen, making healthy meals and building a new system within your household. So before we get started with setting up the foundations for these healthy habits, I encourage my clients to do a big environment overhaul. And we do this in three areas. The first one is in the kitchen or in your full house in some cases. And yes, what I am saying here is I want you to clean and declutter your kitchen. It will make you feel so much better and ready for a fresh start. Do an audit of what you have and what you no longer need. I might go through with you some basics and some essentials that I recommend we all have in our kitchens and what you may need going forward. But you will feel so much better after you start to do this. And once you build a proper system at the start, going forward, I promise you that going to the shop, making meal plans, prepping your meals, all of these tasks that may seem overwhelming initially will become so much easier. And before you know it, you will have habits that you will be able to keep up for life. Now, we may also need to clean up our work environment. And I don't mean cleaning at your desk drawer. But work can be a really challenging space for many of us where we may need to set some boundaries. I have a lot of clients who may need to be social for work. They're often taken for client lunches or feel the need to attend after work drinks regularly. Or it could just be that almost every day there is cake in the office because every day it's someone else's birthday. And now there are ways to navigate these situations without causing a fuss and without drawing attention to yourself. But we need to be aware of all of these potential barriers that are going to make it harder for us to reach our goals. And that way we can come up with a proactive plan to help us tackle these. Then we also have our social network. And for some people, it may involve that you need to speak with your partner or your family about your goals, telling them what you want to achieve and asking them to support you. It can be difficult to make lifestyle changes if the person that you are living with is always ordering takeaway or watching Netflix on the couch when you're trying to motivate yourself to get out for a walk. I once had a boyfriend who laughed in my face when I said I was going to go to the gym with a friend. Thankfully, times have changed since then. But if you are being surrounded by people who are being negative towards you trying to make positive changes, it can be very disheartening. And we want to be making things as easy as possible for ourselves. Now, this is all really only touching the surface, but it gives you the idea of some of the prep work that I do with my clients before delving into nutrition advice. Check out my video here about protein intake, because that would be another key topic that I would be discussing. But if you enjoyed this video, I now have a full playlist on diet and weight loss. So you can watch more of these videos next. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or if there's any other topics you would like me to address in future videos. As always, stay happy and healthy. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching.